Hello, my name is Gary Wells, and today I'm going to speak with you about the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem concerns the characteristic of the set of all samples that you could take of a given population. It says that as you take larger and larger samples of a given probability distribution, even ones that are not normal distributions, that the sample mean and other statistics like the variance and standard deviation form their own normal distributions. Let's consider samples of any distribution. For example, if you keep drawing larger and larger samples from a distribution such as rolling one or more dice and calculating their means, the sample means form their own normal distribution, which we call the sampling distribution. The same is true for the sample variances and the sample standard deviations. Here's an example of the central limit theorem. Suppose you're given a probability distribution that is obviously not a normal distribution. Say the distribution below for rolling a single unfair die or a loaded die that can't land on a two or a five. Notice the probability of rolling a one is 0.25, of two, a zero, of three, also 0.25, of four, 0.15, of five again, zero, and of 6.35. Let's consider the sample means of the following five samples of size four. The first one we'll consider is the sample that contains one, three, three, and six. The mean of that is 3.25. The next one would be one, three, four, and six with a mean of 3.50. The next three, four, four, and six with a mean of 4.25, the next three, two, four, six with a mean of 3.75, and then finally one, four, four, three with a mean of 3.0. Consider the following five samples of size five and their means. One, one, three, four, six with a mean of three, one, one, four, four, six with a mean of 3.2, one three four three three with a mean of two point eight, one three one four six with a mean of three, and one three four four six with a mean of three point six. You can begin to see that these form a distribution, but is it the normal distribution? The theorem says that as we increase the sizes of the samples to six, seven, eight, and beyond, the sample means will eventually be a normal distribution. Let's look at a great online demo of this at onlinestatbook.com. And here's onlinestatbook.com, and we've got a sample normal distribution, so let's mess that up and make it one that's clearly not a normal distribution. We'll pull some of these down, and now we have something that looks maybe a little bimodal. Uh, maybe a bit skewed on one side. So that's obviously not a normal distribution because it's not symmetric about the mean. Let's consider a sample of five values. We'll animate that. One, two, three, four, five. And then below we have the sample mean. Another five. One, two, three, four, five, and another sample mean. So we'll just carry on like this taking more and more samples and building up the distribution of the sample means. And we can take uh, more and more uh, large samples, larger samples like this one. And then notice if I put a fit of the normal curve in here, it looks very much like the normal distribution. Now let's do the same thing, only this time we'll throw in the sample standard deviation as well as the sample mean. And if I take my samples, right, and build that up, and I'll put a uh, normal curve here on this, you can see that pretty quickly, you get also a normal distribution for the mean and the sample standard deviations. So now let's go back and look at a typical problem. Consider this exercise. 
An unknown distribution has a mean of 90 and a sample standard deviation of 8. Samples of size n equal to 30 are drawn randomly from the population. Let's find a probability that the sample mean is between 85 and 92. Well, since the distribution is a normal distribution, we can again just use the normal curve. So here we have a mean of 90, standard deviation of 8, and between 85 and 92, we see that we have an area under the curve of 0 0.3327 or 33.27%. This is just the same as calculating the area under the normal curve in any other circumstance. I hope this has been beneficial. Thank you for your attention.